I'm trying to really get this down time wise. When I first wrote this, I wrote like 50 pages. It took me like half an hour to get through, so I'm going to try and rush through this, but also not rush through it. Um, there's three things I want to accomplish here. I want to give thanks where thanks is due. I want to educate you on Joe's character. I want to tell you how much I love him. Um, so the first thing, um, hopefully, um, excuse me. Um, Craig Anthony, can Craig Anthony stand up for a second? <laughs> Thanks. Hopefully when I describe later how much I love my brother, you'll know just how much it means to me when I say thanks for what you've done for my brother. You have the biggest influence on Joe's life second to our savior. When you first met Joe in the soccer field, Joe was a boy. And not long after that, he became a man. And I believe you are thanked thank for that. More than anyone else, you gave Joe opportunities to be responsible, push himself, provide, and lead. You led by example and has a, have had a positive effect on so many men in this room that, and all you did with that, you did all that with joy um, for the Lord. Um, so specifically the way you conduct yourself is inspiring to not only Joe and I, but so many others that I hope God one day shows you the ripple effects of that. So thank you. Thank you for investing in the person I love the most. Um, I can promise you that investment will be the best investment you've ever made in your entire life. Um, and I hope one day you hear, or when you get to heaven, you hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. Um, so moving on to Joe. Um, Joe knows his self-worth. Um, someone said in the response that I put out that um, Josiah sees the son beyond himself and rests in a sense of self that aligns with God's goodness. Whenever I've seen him have a, to stand up to others, it was in the combination of fierce determination measured words of wisdom, and a look that tells you that he's very serious about what he's talking about. Um, Joe is very humble. Someone said in all caps, literally all the time. Um, every time we catch up, he has a new amazing news, like a new job, graduating early, pennies on the dollar for college, um, and getting engaged, whatever it might be, but he never brought it up. They always had to bring it up for him to speak about it. Um, Joe is an extremely hard worker. Um, Joe is the epitome of hard work. There are so many aspects of Joe's life that showcase hard work. I have seen Joe work hard since I met him. He has constantly picked up odd jobs wherever he can at a young age. He worked hard through school to get good grades, earn a scholarship for college where he actually got paid to go to college. Um, um, and he worked hard. Uh, most impressive of all, he saved with grace through it all uh, since they were in middle school. How many people can say that about their significant other? Um, both Joe and Grace have shown that they are willing to work hard for their commitment in the relationship, um, and I know without a doubt that this will continue forever. Joe is sacrificial. He will give his life for Grace. That has been evident since he first told me about her in his freshman year. I don't know who said that, but thank you. <laughs> um, Joe is a leader. Joe leads in a unique way. Joe isn't the type of leader to get up in your face and tell you what you did wrong and what you need to do the next time. Joe isn't a self-righteous leader who points his finger at you and tells him you that you messed up. People listen to Joe because he is genuinely kind um, to the people that he's talking to. A leader doesn't have to be a person who directs or commands. A leader can be someone everyone respects and loves. Everyone loves Joe uh, because Joe loves everyone. Whether you're his best friend or a stranger he just met, Joe treats each person he meets with the same kindness and excitement, um, that ex infectious excitement um, that he meets with everyone he meets. Joe's not concerned with what other people think. <laughs> Most of you probably know this, but um, Joe's not worried, worried with what other people think in the sense that he isn't concerned with opinions and people that do not matter to him. Um, and people who do matter, um, he cares very much about what they think. He takes advice and constructive criticism well and when needed. He's always willing to strive for better and to change if necessary. Um, he lets the right people influence him. Joe has a very healthy relationship with money. Um, I bring this up his financial confidence for one main reason. 50% of marriages end in divorce. And I would argue more of those marriages are already divorced, but they're just still together. Um, and like was said earlier, the main issue of that is lack of communication. Uh, but I've also heard that what comes down to after that is either sex or money, that marriages end in divorce. Um, and I'm not gonna talk about the adultery, the cheating, all that side of stuff. Um, but I do wanna touch on Joe's confidence. Um, Joe has never put Grace in a position to give her a reason or made a fool's decision regarding money that would cause her lack of trust from Grace. Um, I love what this guy said um, that I follow about this topic. He said, I always forget to cue Amy in on the purchases she has no clue on when coming home on a daily basis, but she trusts me 100% of the time. Because 100% of the time, 
in the last nine years, I have kept my word and I've spent, whether I spent $3 million or $3, she knows that it won't hurt us or our family. I think of Joe whenever I read that. Joe has never put great money before Grace um, and he will never do that to break their trust. Joe is a very loving person. This is one of my favorite verses, but love is patient, love is kind. It is not envy, it is not boast. It is not proud, it is not dishonored others, it is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, always persevere. Love never fails. Everything in this verse is Joe. He is the one of the few people I know that would come closest to embodying the kind of love that is described in the words in this verse. He has been given God's love and he reflects that back to him and to everyone he meets. He is the most authentic uh, person I know and always leads with love in everything he does. Um, moving on, so this is my proudest moment of Joe. When Joe was a, jun a junior at CCA, um, this is how his day went. Joe woke up, woke up early to get to the gym before school. Then he spent the day at school and made sure he completed all of his homework during his other classes um, so that he could get to work after. Um, I remind you that five of his classes were college level classes on top of extra um, CCA classes. So Joe leaves for work. Um, Nate Wood and him started a painting company uh, and they were painting the Manchester area, which if you want to ever hear some sketchy stories about Manchester, just ask Joe about his painting days. Um, <laughs> So they would paint for the rest of the day. Um, then right after, Joe would stop in to see Grace um, before they went home. Um, this was on top of being with her all day at school um, by her side. Um, he did this every day for weeks. Um, I remember being up past midnight many nights um, that he would get home to only do it again the next day. Um, and they would do this for weeks at a time, um, sometimes working in the weekends and then recuperating on Sunday. Somewhere in the middle of the season, um, Joe and Grace were in, well, the season that they were in at this time of Joe working a lot, um, what I would call um, extra pressure was put on Joe. Um, he was confronted by people he loves very much um, with negative feedback of how he was living his life at that time. The main remarks that were being made was that Grace was not treated right, or better put, not his priority. Um, this was incorrect on all accounts, um, but this is where I was most proud of him. Sure, I respect the hustle in the gym, school, and work, but how he handled the negative pressure and the opinions of others um, was, in my opinion, world class. Um, Joe was gentle and lonely with the situation. He listened, he let their points be heard, he never raised his voice, but at the end of it all, he said, I'm glad we can have these discussions and be open and honest with how we feel, but I'm not apologizing because I did nothing wrong. It was bold, and it, and it was not set out of anger or negative connotation. It was just the truth. Someone said this about um, Joe's um, treatment of Grace. He said, Grace is his number one priority every second of every day. Um, he is so tuned into her that he knows how she's feeling or what she needs, even when it seems like he's occupied doing something else. He's always listened to her or checking in on her. She's within earshot. He's listening to everything she says, regardless of what he's doing at times. It's almost superhuman how he period periodically checks on her um, and doing this at every moment. He puts her before himself at all times with his attentiveness to her. Literally unparalleled as far as I've seen in any other one else in their life. I don't know who said that, but thank you, because I couldn't have heard better. Um, so Joe was not afraid to stand for the truth or his character, especially when ha with how he treats Grace. Um, so many of you in the room, um, maybe you can say that you, or how many of you in the room can say that you prioritize your relationship, ran and started the business, took care of your health, went to school, all at the same time. Now let's say, um, you said yes to all those things. You're like, oh, you know, I did that a lot when I was growing up. Um, now add external negative pressure. Were you still slow to anger, gentle with the situation? Still yes? How about all at the age of 17? World class, in my opinion. Um, I want to end this section with a quote that kind of ends um, how I think this Josiah worked the situation. He said, it says, and this is one of my favorite quotes, so a lot of you will know this if you watch Marvel movies, um, but compromise where you can, where you can't, don't. Even if everyone is telling you that something right is something wrong, even if the whole world is telling you to move, it is your duty to plant yourself like a tree. Look them in the eye and say, no, you move. 
And while Job may not have grown up with the struggles of some, he absolutely has problems and scars that he carries with him each day. Joe has a mindset of resilience and positivity. It can be easy to look at Joe and think that he must have the perfect life because he is just so dang happy all the time. But I know this is not the case. Joe's heart, Joe has hardships just like the rest of us. The difference between Joe and the rest of us is not that he doesn't have hard times, it's that he doesn't let them get him down. I'm sure they affect him, but you will never see Joe without a smile on his face. You're never, you will never not be met by a hug by Joe. It doesn't matter what's going on for Joe in his personal life. When you come across him, he takes each person he interacts with, um, makes them feel of the utmost importance, and we all should strive to be like that. <laughs> um, so now this last section, um, I'll just start this by saying, um, two men in my adult life have ever seen me cry. Um, I have not been able to read this section without crying, so congratulations, you will all see me cry. Um, this is how much I love Joe. Um, all love is unconditional. If it has conditions, it's not love. Here's a quote that I like to start with this to kind of set the tone for what I wanted to say. Um, it goes like this. I believe you when you say, I would die for my child. But would you live for them? Would you get yourself healthy? Would you eliminate distractions? Would you leave them more intentionally? You only have to die once. You have to live every day. Do that. Often I hear Pastor Chris say in his sermons that a means to describe the love for someone is if you would die for them, and I completely agree. But I would die for a lot of people. <laughs> um, so I don't think this really gets my point across. Um, so I came up with this. Um, I know Joe loves me. I know that he would die for me in a second. I know that he would die for anyone he loves in a second. But I have a different view on death than let's say the general public. I think um, often we put a dispro just disproportionate emphasis on the difference between life on earth and life in heaven. But I think heaven is beyond comprehension of our amazement. I know that life on earth is hard but still beautiful in its own way. Um, but compared to heaven, I, I, earth is kind of an actual hell. <laughs> Um, so if it ever came down to it, and Joe and I were in a life or death situation, um, and all the avenues to avoid um, this type of situation have been, have, have been exhausted, um, and we are past the point of contemplating um, who else will have to mourn um, our deaths, and it's just me and my brother, um, I, I would let Joe die because um, I would let Joe go to heaven. I would stay on earth and deal with his loss. I would let him. Um, I would let enjoy him. Let him enjoy the love of our Savior. I would let him escape the pain of reality. I wouldn't let him mourn losing me. And I would live my own version of my own personal hell, without letting Joe live a version of a personal version of his. That's how much I love him. So one last quote. I want to leave you with for the rest of the night. If you had to create a human, what would you put them through to make them tough? It probably wouldn't be a really chill life. What would you do to put them through to make them patient? It probably wouldn't be to give them things immediately. So we all want these traits, but each of these traits has a price tag attached to it. As you see Joe the rest of the night, being Joe, and as you experience life with him in the future, Remember the quote above, but each of these traits has a price tag. Joe knows his self-worth. He's humble, he's a hard worker, sacrificial, a leader, a very generous person with what God has given him, and a loving person. He's paid the price for all of these attributes. But most importantly, he's a role model, and he found that in Craig Anthony. Thank you. All right, let's give a hand one more time for Isaac and Creed on